In Tech Time with me, Andrew Humphrey. Now, while many Michiganders are concerned with trying to keep the Great Lakes clean, some Detroiters are also focused on efforts to keep up with cleaning our oceans. And they think they can detect pollutants the size of a human hair from space. Microplastics are pollutants. Environmental pollution by microplastics is a severe problem for, for humankind. It affects the food chain and even affect human health in some way. They can come from factories or landfills. They are smaller than a toenail and can come from everyday activities. Now, most clothes, it's not 100% cotton or 100% wool has got plastic fibers in them. Mm. And when you wash your clothes, it washes out some of that all the time. There's not a great amount of information on how they're moving around the oceans and if there's a seasonal pattern. To clean them up is a, is a difficult problem because first you need to know where they are. Michigan researchers are working with an existing satellite system in space called Cygnus to look for microplastics on the surface of the ocean. Many times when microplastics enter the ocean from manufacturing, other pollutants called surfactants accompany them. They're kind of soaps or films on the top of the water, mm -hmm. um, and they make the waves, they dampen the waves, so it, they make them less responsive, um, less wavy when the, wind, when the wind blows. Waviness is ocean roughness. Ocean roughness can be detected by a satellite signal. The microplastic and maybe also surfactant on the ocean surface actually affects the roughness of the ocean surface. They suppress it, you know, just the same way that oil slicks do. So this signal can be captured by the satellite and then they use the signal to infer the concentration of microplastics in the ocean. So that's actually how we're seeing where they're going. Currently, they are comparing satellite data and lab results from Michigan's wave pool. We've got that set up and we're adding a bunch of junk to the water and seeing how it responds and how it suppresses the roughening. What we observe now is that there is some correlation between the surface roughness anomaly and the concentration of microplastics. If continued experiments and comparisons go well, scientists hope to create a detection system and computer models to do two things. One, raise awareness. If we're able to show which cities are cleaner, which river outflows are dirtier, and that was like common public knowledge, in a better world, people would do something about it. Two, to help cleanup crews. From one side, uh, we hope to use their data to validate our model. And from the other side, uh, we can uh, help them using our data to know the location of the microplastic for a more efficient cleanup later. Both goals are geared toward reducing or eliminating microplastics pollution in our oceans for good. It makes me feel really hopeful. It makes me feel like we can, we can fix this problem. I'm really happy that uh, I can uh, help people do something uh, to make the uh, world better. You don't have a, that many opportunities as a, you know, as a scientist and a researcher to influence you know, just sort of day-to-day -day lifestyle or quality of life of the world. But when you do, it's, yeah, it's something special. Absolutely astounding. And those local researchers are optimistic about having positive results later this year. And it's turning into a worldwide effort, uh, Priya and Grant. Local researchers with this satellite system detecting microplastics, turning into a worldwide effort to detect them and clean them up. Back over to you. Wow, that is just fascinating. Isn't it? Mm-hmm.